Good morning, everyone, teachers and students. How's everyone doing this morning? I hope everyone have a good rest and uh, sleep last night. This morning, we are very uh, blessed and fortunate to have a very special guest with us. Last week, we had Shirin Velaboy, a Malaysian uh, student athlete who study in Minnesota, USA. And she won the 400 meter at the US University Games last Saturday. So today we are very blessed and fortunate to have her mother, Coach uh, Josephine Mary to be with us. But before that, we are going to look at the topic of today, the importance of exercise during COVID-19 pandemic. As all of us are aware that during this COVID-19, it has caused a lot of distress and difficulties among all of us, even for schools in Canada, in US and all over the world. But there is one thing that we must not forget that is to stay healthy by doing exercise because exercise just as simple as five to 10 minutes could improve a lot of our mental health. All right, we are going to go to the next slide. Here are a few words that I would love all of us here, including teachers, to pay attention and to discuss among yourself during this week. The first word is pandemic. Okay, pandemic is a widespread occurrence of an infectious disease over a whole country or the whole world at a particular time. Right now we have the COVID-19 that is happening all over Malaysia and all over the world, right? That's called a pandemic. Number two, exercise. Exercise can be explained as activity requiring physical effort carried out to sustain or improve health and fitness. For example, running, walking, hiking, playing badminton, and a few other activities. Another word that is good for us to learn and to put into practice is called life skill which means a skill that is necessary or desirable for full participation in everyday life. So when we are in school, at Reed International School, we are not just learning science and math and geography and uh, art. There is also a place, also the time of your life to acquire, to improve, to develop some life skill such as time management, cooking, how to deal with people, how to resolve uh, conflict when there is a misunderstanding among your friends. So those are important skills that we must learn when we are in school and continue to get better as we uh, grow older. All right. So remember the three words of the week and continue to discuss that among yourself. All right, next slide, please. Right now, we're going to watch a three minute video about exercise and mental health. All right, three minute video about exercise and mental health, and then we're going to uh, discuss very quickly about that.
students' mental health. Many students don't seem to feel like they can fit exercise into their daily schedules. As soon as midterm season hits, balancing everything becomes very hard. You feel everything piling up and the thought of going to the school gym feels unfathomable. You are overwhelmed and feel anxious and your mental health is suffering. All you can think about is how so many things are piling up and your lack of time to complete it all. What you may not know is even taking out 30 minutes five times a week to do some form of physical exercise can be of great benefit to your mental health and well-being. When you are exercising, your brain recognizes this as a moment of stress. Your body releases a chemical called endorphins to fight the stress. These endorphins interact with opioid receptors in the brain. The opioid receptors are the same receptors that many painkillers bind to, such as morphine. However, unlike with morphine, the activation of these receptors by the body's endorphins does not lead to addiction. The binding of these receptors can elevate mood by reducing pain perception and therefore triggering a more positive feeling in the body. You may have heard of the term runner's high, which refers to the feeling of euphoria that some individuals feel after a run. This can be accompanied by a positive and energizing outlook on life. Exercise has been seen to reduce feelings of anxiety and depression, boost self-esteem, improve sleep, and reduce stress, all which can have a positive impact on one's mental health. A study by De Silva et al. looked at the association of exercise and symptoms of anxiety. Participants took a standard self-administered questionnaire to measure their level of physical activity per week. They were categorized based on whether they met the current recommendations on physical activity, which was at least 30 minutes a day, five days of the week, of moderate intensity exercise. Therefore, participants who reported to moderately energetic physical activity of 2.5 hours a week were considered to have a sufficient level of physical activity. An anxiety symptom score was derived from a 30-item general health questionnaire. A study showed that participants practicing physical activity at recommended levels were 71% less likely to have anxiety symptoms. The American Journal for Preventative Medicine did a systematic review that showed physical activity as a method for preventing the onset of symptoms of depression. Out of 30 reviewed studies, 25 showed that individuals who didn't exercise were at a higher risk for depression. Therefore, although school gets busy and overwhelming, and it seems like we don't have the time to take out for exercise, it can actually help with the feelings of anxiety that many students feel due to life stresses. This isn't saying that exercise is a cure for poor mental health, but it is a recommended healthy coping mechanism for when you may be having these feelings of stress and anxiety and are not sure how to cope. Taking out some time out of your day to do exercise may seem hard, but remember, Physical activity does not have to mean going to the gym. It could be going out for a hike, a brisk walk on the street, a jog, even riding your bike, walking up and down the stairs, or having a dance party in your room in front of the mirror. I'm sure, we all do it. There are so many ways to keep up with physical activity. It does not have to equate to you going to the gym. As soon as you find the form of physical activity that can fit into your life, you will find it a lot easier to take out those 2.5 hours a week that can make all the difference. All right, that is simple and important. And I hope all of you are taking note and remember what are some of the points? Okay, what are some benefits of regular physical activity? Okay, those are the things that we need to um, remember so that we can do it. All right, there are five points that I can remember from the video. Okay, exercise control weights. I know that during this pandemic, many of us like to snack, like to eat a lot of food at home, right? because we are not able to go out very often. Sometimes we order food to be delivered to our home, right? Exercise also combats or help to uh, our body healthy. We can fight diseases. A lot of people didn't realize that just by staying at home and taking the vaccine are not enough. We need to do exercise, whether we are exercising at home or walking around our neighborhood Exercise helps our immune system to fight against any diseases. So it's important to remember that. And then number three, exercise improves our mood, right? When we stay at home, most of the time, 
or when we play a lot of video games at home or when we are stuck in the room, we can feel very down. So exercise just by doing a few simple things like push up, jumping jack, it will help to improve our mood. And then exercise boosts energy. All right, if you feel sleepy, tired, uh, after a long day, just do a little bit of stretching. Just um, go to the wall and pretend that you're pushing the wall away from you. That kind of a simple movement will help to boost your energy level. Finally, exercise promotes better sleep. Many of us sometimes have difficulties going uh, to sleep, just like me. So before going to bed, we can do a little bit of exercises, just like stretching and um, maybe uh, get a tennis ball and squeeze the tennis ball. A simple uh, stretching such as that could help us to improve our sleep. So those are the things that we uh, need to remember because during this uh, pandemic, when we feel stuck at home, it will affect our mental health. It's very important for us to just do simple exercise. All right, so the next slide, we will talk about name a few simple exercise that you can do at home to boost your mental health. What are those? Okay, you can type it on the chat box or you can discuss it among your, your friends and students right now. Okay. You can do um, jump rope or skipping, running. That's right, Sebastian, you said running, that's fine. Okay, sometimes if you do not want to go out and run, okay, this might sound silly. You can run on the spot at home. All right, that's what I did with my student two years ago when we had pandemic. I have to record some exercise for them to do at home to motivate them. Some of the exercises that I recorded and I do to show to them are jumping jack exercise. Many of you know what is it, jumping jack, right? I do not need to demonstrate that right now. And running on the spot, okay? Even if you have a, a badminton racket and a shuttle court, you can just do some hitting around at home uh, against the wall or a basketball or any simple object that you can play uh, with family members and friends and walking all right riding a bicycle that's right riding a bicycle all right around your neighborhood walking even gardening it's a simple form of exercise um, it can be a good uh, form of exercise for mental therapy as well as for uh, your hands because you require to use your tools okay, to uh, do some gardening. So those are the things that you can do at home. Just simple five to 10 minutes or even 15 minutes will boost your mental health. I've done it and I've seen a lot of people using simple exercise as this to improve their living condition uh, during this pandemic. It's very important, all right? So last week, many of us had a chance to listen to a Malaysian student athlete, her name is Shireen Velaboy. Remember that? How many of you remember that? You can put on your chat box saying that you remember. You remember that, okay? Shireen Velaboy is from Perak, Malaysia, but currently she is studying in Winona State. And last week we were very fortunate to have her uh, share a few tips uh, with us about um, how she coped with um, self-discipline study running before she went to compete at the national uh, U.S. University game. Um, 400 meters, she uh, emerged as champion. So we are so proud and we have reason to be happy uh, to be part of this because she spoke to us before she went to run. So if any of the teachers in charge of the video of her running, uh, we can show it. It's just um, about two minutes video, so we can encourage our students. All right, this is it, okay?
Is the sound able to be on? This, this race just happened last Saturday in Kansas. That is the U.S. College Women 400 meter finals. Maybe the sound cannot be uh, turned on, okay? She is on the second on the screen here. There she goes. Second on the top. This is an indoor track meet in US or some other countries where they have four season. During the winter season, they have indoor sports, including running. So she's taking the lead right now. It's a 400 meter race on a 300 meter track. So it's about a lap and one third. It's coming to the final 100 and you see another girl from California is trying to overtake her. And with all fighting spirit, self-discipline and gutsy, she deep to the finishing line with a new Malaysian indoor record, 53.79. And it's also her best personal record. There's a time, Shirin Bella Boy. All right, Shirin, can you show up and say something? Give her a surprise. Shirin is here, in fact. Hi, everyone. Thank you for supporting me. Let's give her, let's give her a hand. She's our champion. All right. You are so proud of you, my family is so proud of you. And you have a lot of fans. And this school is the first school that get to watch your race in Malaysia. So how do you feel, Shireen, about that whole thing being named U.S. champion? Um, I feel very great to have this opportunity to pursue my athletics career as well as my education career in the States. Thank you so much for being so humble and um, so gracious to uh, show up here. You just came back from Kansas yesterday with 12 other athletes, including your coach. I'm sure the journey, the bus ride was tiring and you make time just to uh, greet the students. I believe that many of these students are looking up to you as their role model. And the fact that you have uh, shown that a Malaysian can do well in any part of the world, it's definitely going to uh, boost their, um, their mood and their, uh, their hearts. They're going to work hard just like you. And uh, thank you so much. And you can stay with us. And uh, the next thing is, we're going to invite Coach Josephine to come to the screen. Hi. Hi, everyone. Glad to be connected with you all. Yes, Coach Josephine is the mother of the champion. And uh, two weeks ago, during our morning greeting, I have uh, talked about self-discipline of a Malaysian athlete who make it to the Olympic Games. And she is here with us, Coach or teacher or Auntie Josephine. Is that all right if the <laughs> student call you Coach, yes, teacher sir. or Auntie Josephine? No, no problem. <laughs> Yes, she is an excellent mother, excellent uh, wife and teacher to many kids in Para and to many youth. And uh, we are so blessed beyond words that you are willing to take this uh, time to uh, come to inspire us, especially your daughter is on screen. It's kind of a surprise to you, isn't it, Coach uh, Josephine? Yeah, yeah, that's why. 
I, I was trying to connect with her. Now I'm seeing her on the <laughs> online. Great to be connected with. All right. Before I explain uh, some of the things I have already mentioned to the students two weeks ago about your background and uh, you ran for Malaysia in 1988 uh, Olympic Games. The reason this morning I invited you uh, to come to our morning greeting is to uh, share a few things that could inspire our teachers and our students because I believe you have a lot of stories that inspire us because of you and your husband's dedication, uh, Coach uh, Samson Wellerboy, you uh, produce and you uh, mentor your two wonderful daughters, Sherin and Jocelyn. My first question is, when you were younger, uh, during your primary school years, who encouraged you to take up sports? I think during my younger days, I think everything started from school. The teachers were very encouraging. So I think um, uh, teachers must play a very good role with the children. Uh, sometimes we shouldn't think that uh, sports is just, you know, you have to train for very high level. No, it's not. You know, sports is to keep you. Sports is for life. You know, everybody must understand that sports is for life. Until you're born, until the last day of your day, you have to keep yourself active. That is called sports. So, you know, so my teachers encouraged me in the school because I used to be a very active student in school and uh, they find some talent in me and they always encourage me. Then they uh, got somebody to train me. You know, that's how everything started. So I think um, uh, in simple, I can say teachers must play a very great role to encourage the students and to motivate the students, you know, to be active in school. Excellent, excellent. Now, students and teachers, you heard what our coach and teacher Josephine had just said. All right, we need one another. Okay, teachers inspire and motivate the students. Students must respond to that challenge, right, to be active. And uh, coach Josephine say, you do not need to think about going to the Olympic Games to, to, to start doing sports. We can just do it for life, do it for fun, to stay healthy. That's good. All right, take note of that. My second question, how did you and your husband, uh, Mr. Samson Wellerboy, moti motivate both your children, uh, Jocelyn and Shireen, to exercise or to stay healthy? Maybe you can give some background about both yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah, as I told you earlier, um, everything must start from young. So when they were young, you know, we are so excited when she was in the kindergarten itself, they will have some tally match, you know, on the sports day, kindergarten. And as a parents, we put a lot of effort. We will take leave to go and support them, you know. So I still remember Sherin used to, you know, during the, she's supposed to take something and send to other sites. She would be sending station in one same place. Everybody will be running. And we have to show her, run, run, run. We will take the thing and up from outside. So, you know, that, that's how things start encouraging. We will, we, then the children will, uh, we will, will not have the fear. You know, so I think as a parent also, we have to play a very good role with the children from young. And uh, be part of everything what they are doing. You know, that's the most thing will motivate the children. And it will build confidence in them or two. Excellent. That's good. And you have two children. Um, the eldest one is Jocelyn and she is doing what right now? Um, my elder daughter, she used to represent the state. You know, she's a Sukma gold medalist. And uh, now she's retired because she wants to concentrate on the studies more. And she's doing a master's at uh, USM now. Uh, and she's also doing doing some part-time teaching. That's great. And another daughter, Shireen, she's in U.S. And she's watching you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and your husband uh, was once upon a time Southeast Asia um, record holder until today for 800 meter, right? Yes, yes. The record stands on almost more than 30 years. The record still stands strong. <laughs> and we dare and we believe among all of you here from Reed International School, the future champions 
are all here pot potentially. Okay, either running for your school or for your state or for Malaysia. If Shireen and Samson and Jocelyn and, and uh, Coach Josephine can do it, I believe all of you can do it too. Agree, Coach uh, Josephine? Yes, yes, definitely. You know, you have to start from somewhere. That's and we right. must have a goal in life, you know. Start everything with a small goal, with a tiny goal, you know. Once you accomplish, then you put in the next goal. Then change That's your goal, right. you know. That's how That's you right. have to get on in life. That's right. That's a good advice. Number three, kind of along the things that we just mentioned, what are some advice you'd like to give to our students so that they will exercise regularly? This is not about um, going to the Olympic Games, but exercise. Yeah. What are some good yeah. advice you can give? Yeah, I feel sports is important for everybody. You know, it's not that you have to be a state athlete or an Olympic athlete. No, it's not. You know, because some really talented only, we can go very high. But I think everybody have to keep yourself active because, you know, um, health is very important for everybody. So you have to exercise. doesn't matter. You don't need to go out to find somebody to exercise. You can just get your neighbors, you know, make friends with your neighbors, get a racket, you know, just play a badminton outside your house, take a bicycle, go with a friend. So all this will help your mental health also. You know, you will have friends. And in true sports, I always feel uh, true sports, you will make a lot of friends. You won't be lonely. You know, all mental health comes when you're very lonely. So when you play sports, you join with other people, you will interact. So your mental health will be very strong. So I, I really encourage that everybody have to pick up one sports whichever they like, you know, swimming, running, badminton, or squash, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You pick up a spot and you have to keep yourself active. That's a very good advice. Okay, sports and activities help you to connect with friends around us, okay, so that we do not need to stay at home all the time and just do our homework or play video game, right? We need human connection. That's what uh, Coach uh, Josephine was uh, telling all of us here. All right, any question uh, from the students before we hear any question from the teacher for Coach uh, Josephine? Any question you can type on the chat box here. Any question to ask uh, Coach Josephine? She is now in Ipo Para. Okay, any question from the student? Or you can type it on the chat box. Or we go to the teachers first. Any question from the teachers for teacher and coach Josephine? Hello. Yes, Mr. Hi. Tan, is that? Yeah, Mr. Tan. <laughs> yeah, nowadays uh, we always hear Hi. a lot of problems regarding, uh, you know, spending too much time on games. Yeah, perhaps uh, sports, they in some way uh, help the student to overcome, you know, the habit uh, of spending too much time on, on games. Yeah, how would that do? Definitely, you know, sometimes um, is that's why everything starts from the parents. You know, sometimes we have to keep our children active. So that's why I feel, you know, sometimes they have to enroll them in any sports which they like, you know, anything so that, you know, their mind will be diverted. You know, when they are so free at home, you know, when they get bored, the first thing they will get, everybody's having a handphone in the head. And, you know, and most parents, uh, we don't put restriction, you know, what time they can use and what time they cannot use. So, you know, when children are, when have easy access, so they find, you know, playing games is connected, which I feel is not healthy. So I think the parents and uh, maybe the school can take some initiative, you know, to you know, connect them with some sports. You know, sports means it's, it's good to start with uh, 
games games where you can do it in a group because it will be more uh, uh, they'll be more happier to do as a team rather than doing as an individual you know individual is more for people who really you know very serious and more professional so you know uh, create a game for them in the class you know so this all will help the children to to encourage them to take up sports excellent excellent Thank yeah, you. yeah. I think another point is that uh, sport is the is the reality, and the benefits are real. Yeah, yes. games is so much in the illusion, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you know, like like me, I I I just quote me as my example. You know, I came from a very middle class uh, family. You know, so I go to government school. I know we didn't have anything when I started off. I used to cycle to school. You know, I come from very hard way. I was raised up in a very hard way, but yet we are strong, you know, because I feel um, mentally uh, sports taught me a lot of things. Sports taught me how to be disciplined, you know, how to focus, how to set my goals to achieve, you know. So I think through sports, we learn everything. But uh, I am sometimes sad that nowadays parents, uh, the education is very important, but I feel it must join together. You know, it helps the children to build better. Yeah, excellent think, advice. Excellent advice. Yeah, without much, I will ask uh, Coach Josephine to explain some of the picture that you know she is uh, sharing with us. At what age was that, uh, Coach Josephine, that you received? Looks like maybe you are below twelve years old. Is that right? Yeah, I'm eleven years old. <laughs> that was my school sports day. You know, I didn't have any shoes. You know, I will run barefoot. <laughs> so wow. that's why I gave the photo to show uh, to the students that uh, you don't need to have anything to start something. You know, that's you only true. have to have the willpower, and you must have the interest, and you must believe in yourself. And I think everything will come on its way. When I started, you see in the picture. I didn't have any shoes. That was the school T-shirt. They will borrow us, you know. So that's how we started everything. But now, when I when I I participated, when I became popular, I had my own sponsors to give me attires. I can choose what color shoe I want to wear, what color T-shirts I want to wear. So I think when you put effort, everything will come on its way. That's great advice. A humble beginning path to humility. That is on the signboard at Reed International School. Next picture, please. And this is a great occasion. Share with yeah. us. Okay, this this is I won an Asian Games. I won a bronze medal in Asian Games for 800 meter. And this is a prize giving ceremony. Uh, it happens in uh, 1986. And two 1986 years later, you went back to one place. Two years later, yeah. you went back to the Olympic Games to this stadium, yes, right? Yes, yes. After that, I went back again to the same Korea again for 1988 Olympics. I participated. And during my career, I think uh, so far, I have I had won five uh, gold medal at uh, Sea Games. And I've uh, won um, uh, two bronze at the Asian Games and one silver and one bronze at Asian Track and Field. That's excellent. Amazing. Good inspiration. The next one, we have only two more slides left. I know that. All right. This is very, very important picture. You want to explain a little bit. Okay. This is an award given by the Sultan for me, for the contribution I've done for the country and for my state. You know, so um, all this recognition comes when you prove yourself. And uh, there's people appreciate you for what you have done. You know, so that is... Uh, Two awards I get, one is PJK, another one is the AMN, you know. So that's an award given by the Sultan of Para. We are so proud of you. We are so inspired. Thank you. The last one. The Hall of Fame. Can you briefly explain this? What does it mean? Okay. Hall of Fame, you know, they will choose uh, every year certain athletes who have contributed to the country and they will treat them, you know, they will declare them as a legend and uh, they will induce them to the OCM. OCM is the Olympic Council of Malaysia where they control every sport. So they will place your picture in their office, so like a museum. 
so everybody will know this person have contributed the country and you know only selected people will get this award so i I'm, i'm honored to be given this award and we are so honored that you make time you inspire us you inspire me you inspire all the students here and teachers and we know that in a short while when uh, things are easier for traveling uh read international school would love to uh invite you to the school to uh motivate the teachers and the students and uh, when shirin has a chance to come back to malaysia we believe um the students and the teachers will be so uh thrilled and happy to welcome her you know to campus and to motivate the students uh, any final word before we let both these uh super family in sports you know take a short break I know that we will see them again and we are so blessed we are the first school in Malaysia to have this opportunity and privilege to invite them on screen even the Malaysian newspaper have not uh, written anything about uh, Shireen's success last week and all of you here are the first group to uh, meet her after she won the US 400 meters so we are very blessed beyond words any final thing before we sign off I know, I know. no so thank you so much and i hope all of you are very encouraged and I take up on life exercise yes i take go your guess do you want to share something take your guess can you can you hear me yes yes i can yes. hear you just just Hi, thank miss. you so much for spending your valuable time with us miss uh, josephine uh, and now i can proudly say that i had a session with sport celebrity <laughs> and i'm sure today today is an energetic start for all of us and it was all great advice like uh, being consistent with your effort is the key to success so hope sure. all our students practice that Absolutely. as well and my best wishes to miss sharin as well thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. And have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Let's give the mom and daughter a clap. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.